We cylindrical grind tungsten carbide. Our operators are good at finding good parameters and finding the sweet spot of the wheel, but when we switch to a larger diameter, we have to go through the whole process again. Is there anything we can do to cut to the chase and get these uh, correct parameters again without having to do the whole process again? Uh, I visit a lot of companies doing cylindrical grinding, and they always say to me, hey, we're running it. 20 meters per second when we're grinding carbide or 4,000 surface feet a minute or we're running at 120 RPM or 200 RPM or 60 RPM or running at one millimeter a minute or however many inches per minute or whatever they're running are those good parameters and I say well I have no idea if they're good parameters they might be depending on everything else so I really don't think in terms of workpiece RPM wheel speed plunge speeds what I think about is in terms of grit penetration depth. And really when operators are finding the sweet spot of their wheel, and they are good at finding the sweet spot of the wheel, they play around with it for a few days, a few weeks, they fine tune it here and there, and they do find a set of parameters that work well, and the operator will say, yes, I always run at 100 RPM, I always run at one millimeter a minute, I always run at 20 meters per second, 4,000 surface feet a minute, whatever, for this particular part. What he's really saying is, I have found a grit penetration depth that is the sweet spot of the wheel for this part. Or what he's really saying is, I have found a grit penetration depth so that those grits each penetrate a certain depth so that I cut reasonably well, but I don't get too much rubbing. Typical numbers for grit penetration depths, I'll teach you how to do the calculation in a minute, uh, for a variety of operations are somewhere between 0.5 microns and maybe one and a half microns. That's the range typically for the sweet spot of the wheel and what that means is that's where the wheel likes to be. If we get smaller, let's say 0 0.1, 0 0.2 microns, the grits just sort of tickle the surface. When they just tickle the surface, they rub and they plow a lot, they generate a lot of heat. When you generate a lot of heat, bad things happen. In steels you burn the part, in carbide you might crack the part, or more often in carbide, really what you're doing is softening the resin, burning away the resin, getting lots of wheel wear, chewing up your wheel. Bad things happen. If your grit penetration is too large, two microns, three microns, four microns, typically your heat generation is low because you're cutting quite well, but the forces on the grits are so big that you're just chewing up the wheel, ripping the grits out of the bond material prematurely. So we want to be in the sweet spot. Your operators are probably pretty good at finding the sweet spot. Most of them are. But what happens is they switch to a bigger diameter. That sweet spot has stayed the same in terms of grip penetration depth, but it's changed in terms of the optimum RPM, the optimum wheel speed, the optimum plunge speed, etc. So I don't think in terms of RPM, wheel speed, plunge speed. I think in terms of grit penetration depth. And here's the equation for grit penetration depth. Yeah, it's a little complicated. There's quite a bit there, isn't it? You can do it, stick into Excel, plug those parameters in, and you will get the number. But, you know, it's a little bit tricky of an equation, especially if you want to do imperial, you've got to do the translations there. Let's take another look at it, though. We can simplify this, and we can simplify it and just focus on the things in the red circle. Now we're not going to talk about grit penetration depth anymore, but we're going to talk about those parameters that change. Okay? The others are fixed or the others will stay re relatively steady. So if we focus on that, what I want you to do is I want you to find an operation where the operator has found the sweet spot of the wheel. So he says, yeah boss, on this one I run at this RPM, this plunge speed, this wheel speed for this diameter, and it works great. Okay. Plug those into this rather simple formula. See what number you get. You can even use whatever units you want. You can use inches per minute, inches per second, uh, workpiece diameter in fathoms, uh, whatever you want. Workpiece speed and surface feet a minute, uh, meters per second, but just make sure you're consistent and you're going to get a number. And that number is proportional to the grip penetration depth. Now, for that particular wheel, on that particular part, on that machine, always use a set of parameters that always gives you that same constant because that will put you back in the sweet spot of the wheel. So let's take a look at an example. 
let's say your operator is running a five millimeter diameter part and he says boss I really got the parameters that are working well for this we're in the sweet spot we're running at a plunge speed of two millimeters a minute I'm running at 120 rpm I got a wheel speed of 20 meters per second let's say this is carbide that constant you plug into the equation is 1.73 now, let's say he jumps to a 15 millimeter part. He's three times as large. He says, well, it's a 15 millimeter part, so I'm gonna drop my plunge speed a little bit because it's a bigger part. And I'm gonna keep everything else the same. Still gonna run at 120 RPM. Still gonna run at 20 meters per second. Now that constant, which is equivalent to the, which is proportional to the grip penetration depth, has gotten bigger. And a lot of bad things are gonna happen now you're probably going to chew up your wheel, get really bad wheel wear, maybe even get a rough surface finish. But let's do this. Now when we run that 15 millimeter part and we run at one millimeter a minute, let's choose our parameters to give us that same constant again. So let's drop that workpiece RPM to 80 RPM. We'll keep the same wheel speed. That'll take us to 1.73. That keeps us in the sweet spot of the wheel. Let's say your machine runs at constant RPM on the, um, on the workpiece. You can't change it. Oh, that's okay. Let's change the wheel speed. So we'll plug in there 15 millimeters, one millimeter a minute. We'll stay at 120 RPM, but now let's change the wheel speed to 24.5 meters per second. That keeps me at the same constant. Now I'm in the sweet spot of the wheel. Or you can mix it up. You've really got two things to work with here. You've got the RPM of the workpiece and you've got the speed of the wheel. Or if you want to change your feed rate, you've got three things to work with. However you want to do it, I just want those three put in the equation to give me that same constant because that's the constant for the sweet spot of the wheel. Now let's say your operator comes along and he's got a 50 millimeter diameter part. So he's got this big part and he goes, man, I got to grind this guy. I have no idea what parameters to use. That's okay. We're going to keep that same constant to put us in the sweet spot of the wheel. Let's say he drops the feed rate to 0.4 millimeters a minute. He's got more stock to remove, so he slows that down. That's fine. Let's choose some parameters that give us the same constant. 117 RPM, 28 meters per second. Those give it to us for that feed rate, that plunge speed. And now we're at 1.73 again. Then the next step is to say, okay, well, we've got that. Let's start cranking up our plunge speed. So let's not go from 0.4. Let's try 0.6. Let's try 0.8. Let's increase that. But if we're going to increase that, we have to make sure we address the RPM of the workpiece and or the wheel speed to give us that same constant. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it is to plug it into the grinder's toolbox. That is a program I developed where you can just plug these numbers in It'll give you the grit penetration depth. The grinding Viking will give you some comments about whether those are good or bad. That's what I do because it's just quicker and easier. Or you can do it with the equation. Go with that. Either way, you'll get the same result. And what you'll find is you can always stay in a sweet spot of the wheel once you find it. So really, you've just got to find it for that particular wheel and that machine with that type of workpiece. Find the sweet spot once and then stick with it from there on out.